Hey all, my name is Kurt and I'm here with Trenton. Welcome to SLB Basement Bourbon Bar and today Trenton is the day. It's the day we reveal our five favorite bourbons of all time. No holds barred. If if you don't know, we've, we've done this video already. Similar format, similar everything, but uh, in the previous video, we wanted to showcase some bottles that were a little bit more accessible, a little bit more relevant to, to folks who don't have access to, to these super allocated bottles. So I will put it somewhere up there. If I don't, don't leave me a comment. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to go through our top five of all favorite of yes. all time. Yes. Um, I guess these most looking at these, these are all pretty allocated or hard to find. So. Yeah, and, and you know what? We did have some of those comments were a little bit angry too because they're saying, yeah. how could you ever put up five bottles that you say is your favorite of all time and then limit that list? And, and I get that, but yeah. like Trent was saying, we're just trying to be relevant. So this time, it's not. We only put one rule in place. That's it. We had to own, a, own one of these bottles at some point in time, either Trenton or myself. Like for That's example, where it really screwed me up. <laughs> it, it was tough because for me, I did have a pour of William Larue Weller somewhere, some years ago. You know, at a bar with your mom, and I remembered it was very good, but I don't really remember anything else about it. And I know we get a lot of samples from all you great people out yeah, there that you. send us stuff. That's wonderful too, but I just didn't think it was fair unless we unless we really owned the bottle and was able to really get into it and know about it, just know the whiskey. Yeah, I was. We went to uh, Michelle and I went to like a bottle share thing last week. And I was fortunate enough to try a, a wild turkey from 1973, which you had, yeah. and then a um, an Ezra Brooks from 1974, and those would have blown out anything in this lineup. Well, you remember what was a year or so ago when we when we tried the early 80s Old Granddad? Oh, one four, yeah. was it 114 or just yeah, Old Granddad? What yeah. it was? Yeah. Wow, that yeah. was fabulous too. It was unbelievable. So if we did that, we would be presenting nothing. I feel like maybe yeah. one bottle. Yeah. Um, so we decided to, to put yeah. that rule in place. But yeah. All right. Before we get started in the list, let me make one correction. I know I know this is going to surprise you, Trent. It really is. But your old man made a mistake on last video. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> it happened. I'm not super surprised. Or <laughs> I misstated the mash bill of the Larceny A123 is what I did. Oh, you did? And Trenton knows me, so the night before when I do my notes, it's all chicken scratch every other way. But Not so even legible. <laughs> so can't even read it. When I transposed the mash bills for the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and the Larceny, I wrote it down wrong. And so when I looked at it, I just read it as is. And you didn't catch it either, which really surprised me because Trenton's got like radar ears, man. I mean, he's like on it. I didn't catch it? It doesn't surprise me that I that I wrote it down wrong and read it wrong, but you didn't catch it. No, I stated that the, the mash bill for the Larceny was 60% wheat. 28% corn, 12% oh, okay. malted barley, and that's how I had it wrote down, which is totally incorrect. The correct mash bill for the Larceny A123 is 60% corn, 28% wheat, 12% malted, malted barley. So thank you to those folks out there that set the record straight because yeah, it's a little embarrassing, but I'd rather be right than wrong. So thank you for that. We, we're going to employ a fact checker. Uh, from here on out, uh, applications. Just put them in the comments. Maybe we'll maybe we'll kick you out. We got plenty of them. <laughs> they told me, and I have no problem with that. None at all. I'd rather be right than wrong. So, all right, man. Let's get into this list. This is exciting. This took me forever. Really? It did. I will say this it took, took me took quite me a long time. Probably about an hour. I know that's nothing in in your. Yeah, but that's huge in it your is. world. I was struggling. I was like blind and stuff and everything. <laughs> you were? I was. Wow, holy cow. Well, because I wanted I wanted to I had Michelle yeah. set some stuff out. I wanted to make sure Wonderful. that they were actually in my yeah. top five. So awesome. You got a banger coming out the first one. I'll let you go first. All right, let's do it. Hey, everybody knows I'm a wild turkey guy, right? No. That's that's could be possibly my favorite distillery out there. So I gotta start out with this. This is a gift actually from Trenton and, and man, what a gift it was. Russell's Reserve, two thousand and two. This is a 16-year-old bourbon. It's 114.6 proof. The master distiller's tasting notes, pear, citrus, white chocolate with spice and malt notes. Yes, yes, and 100% yes. You had me until white chocolate. <laughs> I'm just going to say, that is the best wild turkey distillery product that I have ever tasted. It is that good. It's so good. I would have thought you would have put the 17... Uh, Master's Collection 17-year bottle and bond over that. No, absolutely not. So, this, this is wonderful stuff. We were at a at a 
speakeasy in Arizona, and he had a pour of this, and he was just he almost fell out of his <laughs> out of his chair. So I was like, I, I got to figure out how to get one of these. So. Yeah, that's pretty amazing that you did that. I, I was googling goggling that one pretty good. <laughs> I know you at were. That bar. <laughs> well, I don't want to one up you, and in it's some right. people's eyes, this might not it be might. a one up because mine yours is actually older than mine. It's all right, but. I had to put out the Pappy 15. Uh, I struggled putting this in because it's so allocated and it's so hard to find, but the people wanted to see the yeah. no holds bar right. or, or whatever, however right. you say it. So I don't know. Are we putting these? Is this like your number one out of your five? No. Or is it in any order? Okay. No, I, you know, if you want me to put it in order, this is probably my fifth out of my five. Okay. I don't know probably. where this would rank. That's um, okay. We don't have to worry we'll about that. Probably spend that another too. hour doing that. That's all right. But this is so quintessential Buffalo Trace. I feel like my palate personally lines up really nicely to what just low proof regular Buffalo Trace offers. And this is like that, obviously age 15 years and the proof's a little bit higher. It for me is like a quintessential kind of thing. Um, I kind of hate saying it that because it's so allocated and like who's not going to want, you know, who's not going to look happy 15. But I will say that would not have made my list. Okay. I, I, I had a feeling it would. I prefer the BTAC products Okay. over over the Pappies. That's just me. I thought this one was the best you had, though. We did have a 23-year-old sample. Uh -huh. This was way better than that, in my opinion. Yeah, the 23 was a little bit over-oaked, but I know you're not like notoriously a Weeder fan, so it doesn't surprise me this wouldn't be in your top five. But yeah. for me, being a Weeder fan and loving Buffalo Trace stuff, I, I had yep. to put it in there. So. That one doesn't surprise me. I know. And that's A-OK -okay by me. The next one may surprise you. Surprise me. <laughs> coming from me because it's a rye whiskey. Yeah, I said it. I'm not the rye whiskey guy. That's usually Trent and my brother Kent. But this one, it could not be on, off the list. It just couldn't be. Jack Daniels, their special release, 2020 rye. I mean, it blew me away, Trent. I mean, you brought me the first bottle, and that one's gone. And this is my backup, yeah. and I'm afraid to open it because I, I wouldn't I, open it. I no. don't want That's it to tough. go down. I I had my first sip of that. Now it is it is got some proof. Like you know, thirty something. It, it, yeah. it packs some power, but on that first sip, it is so viscous and syrupy, and you get those really nice rye notes, but then that maple syrup, and then you get those deep chocolate notes in there. That is the best rye whiskey I've ever had, no question, and it is absolutely in my type f top five of all time. Quick story, I don't know if you remember this, but I was actually at the one of the government buildings in our area filing my homestead exemptions, and he gives me a call, and he's like, hey, where are you at, where are you at? <laughs> and I was like, I'm just sitting in a, in a chair waiting to be called in line. He's like, can you go over to this liquor store? Like, There's one left. I'd love one. So I did, and I ended up, I ended up picking it up. But I was lucky enough to pick one up, too, and... This was very close to my top. Was it? I want to say you kind of stole it from me, but you know that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Well, hey, too bad. I'll, I'll come out. <laughs> I'll come out with with my rye, and this isn't my only rye. Spoilers that I think trumps this one just a little bit. But for me, this was the Willet. This is an eight year rye uh, that I was fortunate enough to get from from actually one of our subscribers. They actually sent it to me. Uh -huh. um, I think this was about two hundred twenty nine dollars, and. <laughs> Willet Will it is very well known because of whether this is good or a bad thing for their pot still bourbon, which I'm not I'm not notoriously a big fan of. But I love the Willet Four Year Rye. I think it's absolutely incredible, and this just takes the the traditional Willet Four Year Rye flavors and elements and just bumps it up double. I mean, this is an eight year, um, but it's like it's a really nice traditional rye spice kind of thing going on. Maybe a little bit of black pepper, but it, to me, it, it has this really nice dusty characteristic of it. And it, it almost, to me, leans towards a sherry finish. There's some wow. kind of nice fruitiness in there, um, and I, I, I think it's absolutely divine. It's 229 bucks. It, it's it is pretty difficult to find, uh, but if you can find any of the Willet Rise, to I think the the minimum they make is a two year, and they, they put those out every now and then again. Oh, okay. I see them online. Okay. But I highly recommend the Willet Rise if you can't. Yeah, that 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 is an exceptional bottle. That's for sure. Yeah, it's very very good. All right, the next one I have for you. Is actually an empty bottle. Four Roses. Sad this day. is their. This is the 2019 limited edition. Now, in all fairness, this is what I have left of that bottle. As we so, spoke about before, when your bottle level gets pretty low, if you want to save it, you know, put it in a smaller container, a smaller glass container, to last a lot longer. So, that's what I have left of that bottle. But I was fortunate enough to grab like. 
four or five different limited Four Roses editions from 2014. I think it's 18, 19, 20 from a gentleman in our area that contacted me and sold them. He wanted to reduce his collection. Sold them to me for a fantastic price for each one. I, I couldn't say no, but I couldn't believe that my very first limited edition Four Roses would be my absolute favorite. This one, Trenton, all I got to tell you about this one is depth of flavor. Pretty good. It is just remarkable. You get all that great stuff up front with your caramel toffees, all that good stuff. But it delves into a lot of different other flavors, including the tobacco, the leather, and it, it's just, it's just wonderful sip. It's it's an amazing, it's an amazing whiskey. It really is. I don't think I tried that very often. I'm not traditionally a big, huge Four Roses fan. I enjoy them, but mm. um, they're definitely not not as much as you. So uh, that's that's cool. Love that one. Um, all right, so. Next, also a bottle we got last year, um, is going to be the Old Fitzgerald 17-year Bottled and Bond. This was the spring release of 2022. It's a seven-year. Uh, Old Fitzgerald is a weeded mash bill and huge weeder fan. So this this is very up my alley. That one doesn't surprise me. It's on your yeah. list. Uh, we were fortunate Excellent. enough also to get the Heaven Hill 17. Mm -hmm. uh, and Old Fitz does come from, from Heaven Hill. And they were very close. And I know you, you the Heaven Hill 17 was close for you. That was. But this just being a weeder and that, that weeded note that I get in this is just so over the top for me that this, to me, this just had to go in. So It's velvety. Yeah. It's very, just the toffee note in there is just luscious. I get sort of a, really like a, a macerated fruit kind of kind of deal, um, and it's the mm. the wheat note in here is so bold. Yeah. I love it. The oak doesn't, or the the oak being a seventeen year doesn't overpower the wheat, and vice versa. And there's like a nice yeah. nice macerated fruit in there. I love it. Fantastic. <clears throat> Excuse me. My next bottle is one that didn't make your list, and I said, let me know about these couple bottles. Remember, you said yep. didn't quite make it. Stop the presses, because if it didn't make it for you, it's going on mine. This is actually Trenton's bottle, but it's the George T. Stag 2022 release. Now, the only George T. Stag that I've ever had was the 2018, and unfortunately it's gone now. It was very good, but it doesn't hold a candle to this bottle, in my opinion. Man, when you brought this down here, we did a video on this. Put that up here again somewhere, too, for me. I don't know Wait if I can do more than yeah, one. put it up on there. If, I, re if I remember. <laughs> I will. I said 12 we minutes. Do, okay. We did do a review on this one, and I was blown away. I, I, that was our first. my first sip is when you brought it down yeah. here when you opened it up. And and it's just got all that glorious, deep, rich flavors up front. What blew me away was that stewed plum fruit, something in there towards the mid to the back palate that would just took this one right over the top for me. It absolutely had to be in my top five since... You skipped over it. Yeah, it, it was close. This, this would have been, this is easily in my top 10. And when we did the video, we did try yours. You had mm -hmm. a little bit left yeah, at that point. A little bit. And I, I got to say that this one, yours was good, but this was just so over the top with that. Like you said, like a stewed plum oh, thing. It was just like delicious, so thick and viscous. Oh, delicious. Great. Um, for those of you that, that uh, know me, this might not be a surprise, but for those of you that don't, um, I had two rise in my lineup. And my my uh, my second ride is going to be the Thomas the, the Thomas Handy. This is the 2020 uh, Thomas Handy. This is in the B Tech lineup. If you're not familiar, um, I actually did a little bit of research. Don't fall over. This is actually rumored to be about a six year rye. Oh really? Yeah, I would have thought it was maybe a little bit older. I would have too. And I I have uh, when you tried this the 16 year at that speakeasy, I tried the Sazerac 18, and I thought that was way over oaked. I think it would have been beneficial to add a little bit of proof to that, but I prefer the Thomas Handy over that if I, if okay. I had to choose. All right. um, to me, this is like a very traditional, nice, uh, peppery spice kind of rye, but with those sweet notes um, kind of lingering in the background of, of like a Buffalo Trace product, whether that be Pappy, whether that be Buffalo Trace blends, whatever. Um, I can pick that up. I think my palate might be a little bit sensitive to the, to the <laughs> sweet tart notes that I usually <laughs> pick up in a Buffalo Trace product. <laughs> But I like that the proof on this, I think the proof on this is 130, um, and it being a rye at 130 proof, kind of also like this Willet here, the the rye spice doesn't overpower um, your palate with not only the proof, but the rye spice. So I love the the traditional Buffalo Trace flavors that you get in that. And I had, I'm had i surprised I picked that over the George C. Stag, but in, in the well, line that you know, actually did win. I, I think it's a good thing because you're, saying, you're staying true to yourself and, oh, you are, yeah. and you are a rye whiskey guy. Love a good rye. So, yeah, so. You know, I, can't, I can't blame you for that at all. All right, before I get into my last one, and my last one, Trenton, truly is my favorite bottle I've ever had. 
down here at SLB Basement Bourbon Bar. I'm surprised by this one. I yeah. actually. Before I bring it out, I so badly wanted to want to put a scotch in here. I really did, and, and I just don't have one that would make the list. I don't really invest in high dollar scotch. I just don't. I got a lot of wonderful 12 years and some 18 years too that are, you know, a little bit more um, affordable, let's say. But I don't. Ha I don't really get those high dollar stuff that could possibly break into a list like that. Yeah. So I really wanted a scotch, but I had to be. I had to be true to myself, and I. It just didn't make it. I also considered the Red Breast 27 year as well, because I really love that bottle. That's that, a good one too. That yeah. bright, bright red raspberry with a little bit of grapefruit stuff going on there. I love that one too. But when it came down to it, this Habiki 21 year is my favorite bottle that I've ever had. And I'll always keep it here. As you can see, it's empty, you know, and Sad. you know, more than likely I won't get another one because it does cost a couple dollars. And I was happy that I had it down here once. It's 86 proof. Now, can you imagine I would pick my favorite I've ever had mm -hmm. as an 86 proofer? No way. I wouldn't I, guess that. This, this particular bottle, uh, it's a Suntory product. So it's a blend of three different whiskeys. It's the Hakushu, Yamazaki, and Cheetah is in there too yeah. so um but it's just it's just a marvelous blend it is so nuanced it takes you on a i mean you could really pour two ounces of this and sip it for hours it really? just it just takes you on a journey like no other it, it's it's a little bit floral it does it's very honeyed it does have some light baking spice in there but then also, it has a beautiful vanilla multi note in there too. That was just oh, to die for. And then, and another reason too. This is a very sentimental bottle for me too, because my other son Corey, when he come down, him and I is the one that polished probably most of this off. And, and we'd sneak about, you know, three quarters of an ounce or an ounce of this, you know, pretty much every time he would come over. And him and I shared a lot of this bottle together, which which is special for me. I, I tried that a couple times. I so badly wanted to like it because 86 proof Japanese stuff. Um, but that, that malt, I remember the honey note in there being very good. But at that tail end that finished me, that malt just kind of, I don't want to say it ruined it for me, but it, I'm not traditionally a big malt yeah. fan. So yeah. you kind of, I bet you could see yeah. where I was going with that. But I love that one. I'm so glad I had a chance to get that one. Anyways, enough of mine. You got one more left, my friend. Well, I feel like I surprised you a little bit with this one when, when we you came did. down. You guys might be a little bit surprised as well with this one. Um, judging from the bottle shape, this isn't an old Forrester birthday bourbon. This is actually the 13th Colony Cast Strength <clears throat> Double Oak. This is like 135 proof. It's a double oak. 13th Colony is, I think, kind of a newer distillery. They're down in uh, south. I think they're in uh, in Georgia, whether it's Atlanta or somewhere. Um, but this is like Woodford double oak on steroids, man. It's <laughs> it, If you take the, like we've described it before, kind of like a maple syrup kind of breakfasty kind of note. If you take that and just, if you were to concentrate that and you just amp up the proof a little bit, it carries that flavor very nicely through. Wow. I would say that this is very reminiscent for me of... Woodford Double Oak, but just in more of a concentrated form. Yeah, I just had a tiny. I didn't have it. I didn't ever had that before. And I brought it down. And I'm like, I, I've seen it on. I've seen it on a few shows, and yeah. I see it online. So I kind of thought that's what it was. But I had a little dribble right before the show, and I'm, wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's really good. This was actually sent to us from a from a subscriber. Otherwise, th this is an in Indiana. Thank so, you so yeah, much. thank you wow. very much. Uh, this would not have made it. In, in a video, I just there's no way for me to find this. They're not in Indiana yet. I don't know what their market market share is or mm -hmm. anything like that. And this is the very limited from from what I understand. I could imagine. Um, I think this is 150 ish kind of dollar so up there yeah. in the in the uh, in the price point. But for what you get out of this, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to pay that, yeah. especially for a newer distillery. Sure. You know, we got we got all these big dogs established uh, kind of yeah. names up here, and yeah. then I w I'm happy to showcase like a smaller distillery yeah. like this that's doing me too. Incredible stuff. And it like was that. very good, too. Very good, it, yeah. it, was a, yeah. it was a showstopper. Oh, yeah. It really, really was. Hey, that's all we got for you today. But before we sign off, just a few words here. If you, if you could just give me just two minutes, please. There's a lot of, of hitters on the bar top. And it's what you guys wanted, and we're happy to do that. We're happy to give you whatever you want to see. Uh, this is truly our list of the best we've ever had so far, of bottles that we've owned. But it doesn't take these big-time bottles to have the best you've ever had. It doesn't take that. There's sentimental value. I've talked to many, many people, Trenton, that tell me Wild Turkey 101, 
Old Granddad, Bottle and Bond. That's my favorite because I used to sip that with my grandfather. Love you know, that, and yeah. now he's not here no more. And I always have one on the shelf and I just never open it. You know, that's, you know, that's, here, this is, this is another one right here. Oops. All right, you're spilling all, all right, the all Here's the stuff. another one. You know, this is, you know, my, my wife's father passed away just a few years ago, and he loved, for whatever reason, he loved Seagram's VO, right? He loved that bottle. This bottle is over by his picture in the corner of the bar, and it will never be opened. It'll be there because it's a sentimental value. So you don't have to have, you don't have to have this. You don't have to have that. You know, the, the best part of bourbon and whiskey is sharing with friends and family and the journey that you're on. That's the best thing about it. Well said. It's not about this stuff. It's about the journey. So that is all we have for you today. We appreciate and love each and every one of you. As always, we ask you to please drink responsibly. And we'll see you next time right down here with Trent and I in a good old basement bourbon bar. See you later.